it's a very, very short survey. It just takes one minute. Okay, so perhaps uh, those of you already in, just uh, look through these two questions, very short question, and just type in the chat, in the group chat. Huh? Don't worry, uh, in the group chat, nobody else can see, uh, only myself, I can see the, uh, the results huh? or your answers. All right. Okay, welcome for those parents who just joined us. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. I'll start in about three minutes time. Okay, so thank you very much for joining. Those of you, those parents who have joined us, uh, just a quick uh, survey. All right. Uh, okay, so just these two questions. So you can type your answers uh, in the group chat. Uh, I just want to know the background of uh, the parents here, the participants here. All right. Okay, good afternoon. Parents who just joined us, we still have a few more parents to join. And I'll start in about two minutes time. Huh? Okay, so for parents who just joined us, uh, just take a look at these two simple questions. Okay, and uh, write your answer in the group chat. Okay, all right. Okay, by the way, some of you may be wondering, hey, how come Mr. Young got no hair? <laughs> okay, this is my usual self. Okay, this was just taken a few weeks back, but uh, I recently came back from Umbra. So, you know, so I was wondering whether I want to put on a cap or not. Huh? So my... Admin say, uh, no need to wear a cap, lah, Mr. Young. Be yourself. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so normally I have hair. All right. So I'm not bald yet. Okay. All right. Uh, those parents just joined us. Thank you very much. Okay. I will start very, very shortly. We still have quite a number of uh, parents who are joining us. I'll start in about one minute's time. So those parents who have just joined us, uh, welcome. Just take a look at this short survey, all right? Uh, and then type your answer in the group chat, all right? Okay, thank you for submitting your answers. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll start, yeah. All right. Okay, we, we may still have some parents uh, joining us. Okay. Uh, my admin, uh, Nori Ima, please uh, assist uh, to admin any parents who just join uh, in between. Huh? I'll just, I need to start because quite a lot of things to cover. Okay. All right. Okay, let me give me a few seconds. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome, uh, parents. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for uh, joining today's session. Okay, my name is uh, Young Iskanda. All right. Okay, this is me with hair just two, three weeks ago. Okay, uh, I just came back from Umbra, just short trip after the PSLE. So that's why that explains why my hair is bald. All right. Uh, okay, so uh, I've uh, extracted the questions, okay, from uh, parents who have registered. Okay, uh, for this particular workshop, and I'll try to answer uh, everything, all the questions along the way, and then at the end, I also have a Q&A session, so anything that I miss out, I will answer uh, at that time, and if you have any questions along the way, 
All right, please feel free to type in the group chat. Okay, so not to worry, the group chat is private, meaning that only I can see and nobody else can see. Okay, so it's not a public uh, chat. Okay, but I can see uh, the questions. All right. Now, so these are some of the questions. Okay, marks allocation for answers. How do you manage differentiated teaching in your class for students with varying size of proficiencies? How do you teach kids to break down problem sum into bite question sizes? How to make the child remember all the maths heuristics method? How do children differentiate maths problem sum methods heuristics? My children have issues with time management, especially for paper two. My child loves to finish his paper very fast. Right? Uh, what would be a good gain chart? template to plan for PSLE and so on. Okay, so I just extract the questions uh, from the parents here. Okay, and I will answer along the way uh, in this uh, session. And then at the end, if I miss out anything, I will try to cover as much as I can. Okay, so for maths, uh, I have about roughly about 45 minutes or one hour maximum. Then after that, I need to move on to science. Okay. All right. Now, again, I would like to thank uh, parents for joining today's session. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm very, very surprised or uh, very thankful that there's a lot of parents who uh, joined the session. In the past, we used to conduct quite a number of uh, parents' workshops, but physical ones, right, prior to COVID, uh, we don't have many uh, uh, response, right? Uh, so, but this time now we thought that why not we conduct uh, via Zoom? So maybe there will be much more response. So, uh, true enough, there's very good response from parents here. But uh, there's about eighty over sign up. But uh, now, as of now, I think, but maybe some parents will join along the way. Okay. So parental involvement is very very important in your kids' education. <coughs> so it takes a village uh, to raise a child, right? And the partnership between uh, parents, home and school is very, very important. And there are many, many research that shows that parental involvement is positively correlated to students' academic performance, okay? So meaning that the more involved you are in uh, your kids' children education, the more involved, right? Uh, the better your chances of uh, your kids performing uh, in school, all right? So that is by many, many education uh, research. Okay, so thank you for uh, joining us, meaning that uh, all our parents here are very much uh, involved and are concerned over your children's uh, results or academic performance. Okay, so just a little bit about me. Uh, so I'm a founder of uh, Edufan Learning Center. Okay, I think most of you know this. Uh, we have five physical centers and one online center. The online unit was uh, established since uh, COVID. Okay, I was a former uh, MOE school teacher and HOD. All right, these are the schools that I've taught in Mary Stella High uh, Primary School, which I was the HOD there. Uh, Yumin Primary School, Parkview Primary School, and Riding Mas Primary School. Okay, currently uh, I teach P6 uh, Maths, and even though I'm the uh, you know the principal of Edufront, uh, we have about 30 full-time staff and 120 tutors, but I'm still very much involved in the teaching uh, the P6 classes. Okay, so I go around and teach uh, my P6 uh, maths and science classes. So these are some of the photos uh, from this year's PSLE students, right? Just uh, taking PSLE this year, 2022. Right, so on the left here is at Tampines. Uh, this is at Serangoon North, and this is my class at Woolen Center. Okay. And uh, at the same time also, uh, I have uh, myself, okay, uh, I'm an experienced PSLE parent, okay, I've gone through, uh, five of my children went through PSLE, the latest one was just last year, all right, okay, so uh, I've taught students of various ability levels, at Mary Stella, I used to teach the top classes, so students who used to score four A stars at that time, eh, the past uh, the past uh, results or the past uh, grading system. And I've also taught students of average ability as well as uh, the lower uh, achievement students. All right. So I've uh, experienced teaching uh, various uh, ability students. Okay. So what I'll be covering in today's workshop, okay, the importance of parental involvement, the overview of uh, primary maths curriculum, 
the types of questions and uh, contents waiting, the typical results, uh, PSLE exam format, uh, different types of problem solving strategies, diff, uh, the Apollo model, understanding uh, learners' different learning style, and how as parents, right, we can help support our children in the PSLE so that they can get the best possible results. Okay. And I believe that everyone here is very concerned over our kids' uh, results. We want uh, all of them to score. And from what I see, uh, the parents here, uh, we have about 80, 90 parents who sign up. I, I think about a majority, uh, uh, you'll be having students or your children taking the PSLE next year. I was hoping there'll be more parents who join, you know, uh, their child in P1 or low primary or mid primary, right? But uh, nevertheless, uh, no problem because, um, you know, it's better to know as much as possible, right? While preparing your child, uh, you know, for the uh, PSLE, okay? And importance of parental involvement. Uh, number one, the curriculum is very challenging, right? And often parents become the first person for their children to turn to. Right, so in school, sometimes you know, uh, children are very shy to ask uh, teachers, right? Because it's a big class, and uh, you know, and, and parents and teachers uh, are not able to give the time for individual students. Okay, so parents, when they go back home, so if parents is able to coach them, right? So there's the best uh, possible arrangement for the child. And some parents tell me that okay, I do not know or I cannot be involved because I do not have the necessary skills. I do not want to teach the wrong thing. Okay, but uh, even if you're not directly involved in coaching your children uh, directly, okay, you need the skills to be able to evaluate their test performance, right? So if your child comes back home with the results, exam results, and then you show the parents, okay, if we are not aware of, you know, the syllabus, uh, what to look out for, we just look at the final marks. Then you say, oh, fail. Why you fail? Pa. Okay. So that is not uh, helpful. Okay. So, and we also need the right resources, uh, the right knowledge to choose the right resources for the child. Okay. For example, to evaluate uh, what uh, learning resources for the children, what assessment book to buy. When you go to a popular bookstore, there's a lot of uh, materials to choose, right? So what uh, is the best uh, books for the child? And tutors, even if you hire tutors or send to learning centers, right? How do we evaluate one learning center with other learning centers? How do we evaluate one tutors with other tutors, right? So you need to know uh, the syllabus, the curriculum, the expectation, the grading system, and so on. Okay. And sometimes it's a very challenging for many parents because there's a lot of changes since the time uh, parents take PSLE uh, some time back, many, many years back. So a lot of changes, a lot of developments, and so on, okay? Like uh, perhaps a very common problem is the use of models. Many parents say that, okay, I do not know how to teach my child uh, using models. I only know how to teach algebra, all right, uh, using algebra. So, so sometimes there's a mismatch of uh, parents' knowledge with the current syllabus. Okay, uh, and I want to share with parents, uh, remember I mentioned about the challenging curriculum? Okay, I just want to share uh, a data that I extracted from uh, MOE uh, website itself. Okay, so this is uh, the latest uh, data which is published by uh, MOE. So you can see uh, this is uh, students who pass uh, standard maths, PSLE standard maths. Now, uh, this is students who, get, who got A star to C. This is based on the old grading system eh, in 2020. All right, so you can see overall 85% national average. So that means out of 10, about uh, two uh, or about eight pass, right? Uh, but if you break down into based on uh, race, right? So our um, the Malay com community, so you can see that around 60% pass. So that means uh, out of 10, six pass and four did not pass PSLE maths. And this is a data for the past uh, 10 years from 2011 to 2020, all right? So this is a published data, it's uh, up to us to make the necessary uh, interpretation and so on, okay? So I just want to highlight, to emphasize that uh, maths is something not easy, right? Uh, it's challenging for the students, 
right? And this is uh, based on uh, real uh, data, okay? And I want to share with parents uh, a bit more about uh, the curriculum so that parents have an understanding uh, of uh, how the structure of the primary school curriculum. Now, it is important that uh, we start uh, teaching uh, our children maths very, very, very early, all right? As early, because some parents ask, when do we start uh, preparing for PSLE maths? Okay, my answer will be as early as possible. Okay, if you say that uh, preschool, yes, preschool, right? But it's never too late to start, right? If you have been uh, have not been, uh, you know, emphasizing on uh, maths for your child, but uh, so it's always the the time to start is always now, right? But uh, if you ask, right, when is the time to start preparing? Is as early as possible, okay? Now, why I want to share uh, the this is how our curriculum is uh, created. Okay, it is based on the uh, it has a spiral uh, approach or the spiral structure, okay? Uh, so for example, in the learning, the topic on fractions, first fraction is first taught at primary two, okay? So at every level, higher levels, fraction is again revisited, but of course, at the lowest level is the very basic concepts. And then as a uh, student goes higher up the level, they, they add on more concepts, right? So P4, there's also fraction, P5, there's also fraction, and P6, there's also fraction. And each level, as they are going up, okay, the concepts gets more challenging. And importantly, it builds on from the prior concept. So it means that if the student, the child, is not able to grasp the concepts well, okay, they will have problems understanding the concepts as the topic is taught again at a higher level. Okay, so as parents, it's very important that we, uh, we uh, take a look uh, of the understanding and make sure that they understand the concepts taught at every single level. Okay, if not, it's going to become more challenging for the kids. Sometimes the children say, I get lost, right? Teaching P6 topics lost, right? Why? Exactly because they are not able to understand the prior concept. Okay, so how are they able to understand the more challenging concepts? Okay, likewise for other topics like percentage. Percentage is first taught at primary five. At P6, there's a whole chapter on percentage again, and it builds upon the knowledge uh, that they have taught at primary five. So if the concepts of percentage is very weak at primary five, or it was taught very, very quickly, or the children do not have, or were probably absent from class, and so on. So when the topic is uh, going to be taught again at P6, so the, uh, the student will have a uh, challenge, okay? All right, so that's how uh, the structure of the curriculum. All right. Uh, okay, let me go on to the next slide. Okay, so in the, uh, uh, am I going too fast, too slow? Please uh, just drop me uh, a chat here, all right? Okay, so in the uh, primary maths uh, framework, in the older, in the past, uh, when parents used to learn maths, okay? Uh, so it focuses a lot on computations and routine procedures, okay? But the revised curriculum, the curriculum that our children is uh, doing right now, uh, they are based on uh, problem solving, okay? A lot of focus on word problems and pupils are not expected to do tedious calculation. So that's why uh, the use of calculators uh, were introduced uh, quite some time back at P5. So P5, so they can use calculator and we say, okay, use calculator because they do not want to test students on the routine calculation, but rather on uh, the more complex uh, challenging word problems, okay? And I want to share with parents uh, typical result trends of students. Huh? Okay, uh, this is purely, this is not any data from MOE or any schools. Huh? This is purely a mock-up data. And based on my personal experience uh, as a tutor, as well as a school, ex-former school teacher. 
All right. So we have uh, four categories of students. Okay, let's say student A, B, C, and D. Now, student A, uh, other students, the I would say the higher achieving achieving students who will probably score AL1 or AL2 uh, in the PSLE, right? Uh, student B, uh, the grades will be between AL3 to AL5, and student C, AL6, and student D, between AL7 and AL8. Okay, so uh, to score, to be the student A, okay, they have to be consistent along the way from primary one. Huh? If you see your child, uh, is scoring very high, 185 to 90 marks all the way until P5, then there's a very high chance that your child uh, will get AL1 to AL2. Okay, if your child is uh, getting these results, all right, uh, at uh, P1 to P4, 80 something, 90 something, but at P5, uh, the result is between 70 something to 60 something, all right. Uh, I will explain why there's a drop of uh, the results between P4 and P5. Okay, and so the uh, the trajectory is for the child to get AL3 to AL5. Uh, for student C, AL6, this is the biggest bug, right, based on the current grading system, right, uh, from AL6, uh, the marks between 45 to 64, right, uh, student D, the lower achieving student, Okay, struggling student, so uh, they are likely to get AL7 to AL8. All right, so you can see that between P4 to P5, okay, if your child is at P5, if you notice that there is a tendency for the child, your child to drop, uh, not only for maths, uh, but for all subjects by about 20 marks between primary 4 to primary 5. Okay, the main reason is that primary 5, the difficulty level or the challenging uh, questions are all at P5 onwards. Okay, example, maths. Huh? Maths P4, there's only one paper, right? There's only a single paper, but P5 and P6 is the P5, they are following their P6 uh, PSLE series, two different papers. Paper one, right, uh, one hour, and paper two, one and a half hour. P4, everything combined together. So the number of word problems is only very limited to maybe about 30%, 20% of the questions, the whole entire paper. But P5 onwards, they are pegging towards PSLE standard, right? High, more difficult question, more difficult exam format, and many students are not prepared, and more many challenging questions. Okay, so, but the higher ability students tend to be able to cope, right? But if the students are not aware so even students who have been scoring between 80 to 95, between P1 to P4, so they may see a drop in the results by 20, as much as 20 marks. Okay, on average, uh, 20 marks. Okay. All right. So uh, the trend is that there's a drop by 20 marks. And then if the child, if there's positive encouragement, if uh, the child makes a lot of effort, okay, they can slowly improve, right? At the end of P5 results. And then, mid-year, and then depending on the efforts, okay, the child can improve and get the results that they want uh, between AL3 to AL5, you know, for this category of students. This category of students, student A, they may get AL1 or AL2 because AL1 is not easy. Sometimes they make careless mistake and so on. Okay, so this is the trend. Yeah, student C, right, if the student is getting between 45 to 55 marks, okay, there's a high tendency uh, for the student to get to achieve AL6. Okay. And of course, if they work very, very hard, right, at P6, uh, uh, P5 to P6, they can, okay, uh, get so called promoted or get higher marks, okay, boost their marks to between perhaps AL5 to AL3. Okay. So why I share with parents this so that, so that uh, parents can uh, set your expectations. Okay, when you are coaching your children, because I see uh, some parents, uh, the children is getting around these marks, and then they say that okay, I want uh, my parents, my students telling my parents wants me to go to Raffles, wants me to go to Arai, Victoria, Cedar Girls, right? So it is very very challenging, not impossible, okay, but uh, it is uh, very challenging. So when we set targets for our children, we do not want to set uh, targets which is not achievable. If not, the students will not. Uh, you know, uh, you know the concept of smart targets. We do not want our, our students, our child to be demotivated instead of motivating them. Okay. 
All right. Okay, so this is the contents just for uh, student, uh, parents' information. All right, uh, so you can see that. Uh, second. Okay, so you can see that uh, the percent. Why I want to share with parents this is that uh, the the weightage, uh, the weightage emphasis uh, uh, is on whole numbers. Okay, when we say about whole numbers, it means uh, it includes fraction and decimals. Uh, numbers, uh, numbers, fraction and decimals. A uh, measurement will include uh, like money, okay, circles, uh, volume, area and perimeter, 25%. Geometry, 15%. Ratio, 12%. And uh, data analysis, sorry, not data. Data analysis will be about 10%. Speed and algebra. Speed and algebra are P6 topics. Okay, so these are the smaller topics, all right? Okay, a bit of uh, the breakdown of uh, the format. Okay, so for parents who are still, uh, who are not very, very sure, just uh, for me to go through very quickly. So for the PSLE exam format, uh, it is, there's two papers. Paper one, 45%, uh, one hour, no calculators. Paper two, they are given one hour, 30 minutes, uh, 55 percent all right so in paper one supposed to be the easiest the easier questions all right so uh, your child really need to score in paper one okay so uh, mcq is uh, 15 uh, mcq uh, 10 one mark question and uh, five two mark questions in booklet b will be the short answer questions all right so for paper one is just the final answer all right so if your the child can get the final answer, right? Uh, then they, they will get the marks. Okay, uh, showing of working is not necessary. For paper two, right? The showing of questions, uh, the working, the steps is necessary because there will be method marks. Okay, so in paper two, 55%, one hour, 30 minutes. All right, uh, five short answer questions. These are the easiest questions, the first five questions, two marks. So I always tell the student, especially the uh, low ability student, you need to try and score in the two-mark question, the first five questions, okay? And the rest, you grab as much questions, as as, mark, as much marks as possible. You cannot get, uh, say, let's say the five marks. You cannot get five marks. At least you can get one marks or two marks, okay? Better than leaving the questions blank, all right? And there'll be a short break of about one hour only yeah, in the PSLE between the two papers, all right? Okay. Okay, so the features in paper one, speed and accuracy is very important, right? Because it's only one hour, there's lots of questions. Uh, and the child needs to answer in less than two minutes. Okay, and very little time for checking of answers, right? We want the children to check, right? But in reality, majority of them may not have enough time to complete, okay? What more to check the answers. So they need to be quick uh, and accurate in the answers. Very high level of anxiety because it's about speed and prone to careless mistake, all right? So what is required or expected of the students is the mastery of concepts and straightforward uh, word problem, okay? So if your child is scoring less than 60% in overall uh, at P5, okay, so you must take a look at uh, their paper one, all right? Uh, so there's no point doing the challenging uh, word problem, the four five mark questions, if the child is not able to master paper one questions, right? So grab all the one mark, two mark questions first, then we can move on to the three, four, and five mark questions, all right? So common mistakes, okay, we have the errors uh, in mountain, mental calculation, right? Remember paper one, they cannot use calculators. Uh, some parents, some students, uh, uh, especially the weaker students, they are used to using calculators at home or in school. You know, nobody monitor, right? Uh, so they can use, uh, they use calculators, right? Uh, even though they're not supposed to do so, okay? Uh, so I see this a lot and I always remind uh, the, the student. So as parents, you can also make sure that they don't use uh, calculators. Uh, you know, the urge to use calculators with the paper one type of questions. Uh, if not, they have problems. Uh, like for example, a question on conversion. Convert two over seven into decimals. Okay, convert two over seven. So this is a typical uh, paper one question. 
Okay, booklet B, convert to decimal. So they are expected to use long division. So many students, they just press calculators, right? We're not supposed to do so. And then in the exam, they are not able to do so. Okay, they cannot get, right? Sometimes they fumble. Huh? They put seven divided by two. Okay, it should be two divided by seven. All right? Uh, using of the wrong formulas. So for example, area of triangle instead of half base times height, they use length time breadth instead. Okay, stopping one question for too long, right? So let's say one of the MCQ question, they are stuck. Okay, the strategy at paper one is if the children is stuck, the student is stuck, is to move on to the other questions. Okay, grab the other questions. Especially the MCQ, two mark question can be quite challenging. Huh? So I always tell the student, okay, if you are stuck with the two mark question in the MCQ, move on to the one mark question of booklet B, right? Because it is they're supposed to be done together. All right, so grab all the one mark question first. Okay, uh, so the strategy to help your child in paper one, review key concepts in every topic because paper one is the direct, straightforward kind of uh, maths uh, understanding of uh, maths concept. Okay, uh, example, operations in fraction, how to divide fraction, add fraction, right, conversion, how to convert liters, uh, milliliters, right, uh, how to multiply, how to find area of uh, triangle, Right, uh, properties of four sided figures, rhombus, and so on. Very straightforward, direct kind of question. Okay, uh, so what they can do is that they can redo the school workbook. All right, okay, so students who are getting less than 60%, uh, the student tend to have a lot of problems with paper one still. Okay, if they're not able to master paper one, so it is more challenging to master paper two. So I always tell the parents that uh, you, need, you need to be. Uh, practical in how you coach uh, your children, right? Prioritize, okay, depending on the ability level of the child. Okay, so you can redo uh, the school workbook, right? Have a second uh, workbook, buy the second workbook at home for home use, right? Let the school uh, do, the teacher do uh, with the child in school, but at home you have a second set. So let's say your child, you see uh, your child's book, Okay, the child is not able to or get a lot of wrong on the topic on percentage, for example, right? So, uh, so what you can do, okay, uh, Ali, so since you get wrong, so I want you to redo. Can you redo now with a uh, school, the, the home set? Okay, so that's where you can help your child to, uh, you know, to uh, reinforce the concepts at home. Okay, so for paper two, Okay, uh, one parent asked, how do I get my child to avoid careless mistake? Okay, later I'll share uh, a bit more. Huh? Okay, so for paper two, the focus is on conceptual understanding and the strategies to use uh, and what strategies to use. So uh, different heuristics, right? Different problem solving strategies. So MOE's emphasis is on model drawing or unitary method, right? Now, unitary method is what we call a simplified algebra. That means not using model, but using units. So it's actually very similar to algebra, but they use units and there's only one variable. Okay, so units are X in, uh, in, in secondary school, right? Uh, so, uh, so MOE emphasis, emphasize on these two, uh, um, uh, these two approach, okay? And for paper two, uh, the method marks is awarded Okay, for steps. So let's say it's a four mark question. If your child get wrong, the examiner will look at the working. So make sure your child is able to write, uh, you know, write the working as clearly as possible, present the answers as clearly as possible. So because examiner wants to give marks, it's not the examiner wants to penalize. We do not want to penalize student, but we want to let the student get as high marks as possible, right? If the student is not able to present the working well, and then the final answer is wrong, Right, so and some students do not like to do working, okay. So, uh, now how is the examiner going to uh, give the marks? And all the steps must be presented clearly, logically, and legibly. And marks could be carelessly lost through incorrect math statements. So, sometimes students write like this you know, 24 plus 35 equals 59, and then immediately they put plus 41 equals to 100. So, this is mathematically wrong, right? So, they should write in the next step. Okay, so some students carelessly do this, so they will be penalized uh, in the method, even though the final answer is correct. Okay, so common errors, they copy the wrong numbers from the question stem, okay, uh, transfer error. Overlook important keywords and phrases. 
uh, each left, you know, the first, remaining, at most, okay, the least. Okay, these are important phrases. Applying the wrong heuristics. Okay, later I'll share with parents more about heuristics. Huh? Not leaving answers in the units required. Okay, so sometimes uh, there will be marks for units. Huh? Uh, so if the student leave out the units or write the wrong units, for example, instead of square centimeter, student write just centimeter, half mark will be deducted. Okay, or if no units, huh? this is for paper two questions. Paper one, no need. Huh? They'll write the units uh, for the student. Now, these are the different types of uh, common heuristics right, uh, that we see uh, that students may be familiar with using a diagram, look for pattern, model, method, unitary, guess and check, making a list, working backwards, simplify the problem before and after, branching method, repeated identity. Okay, so there are many, many heuristics. And okay, the thing about heuristics is that uh, we there is no compilation or MOE doesn't give a list. Okay, these are the heuristics that the students need to know. Okay, uh, these are uh, the names. Uh, the students do not need to know the names, you know. So because the names doesn't matter, you don't have to write the name in the, the name of the heuristic when the student is presenting the answer. As long as the method is correct, right, and the answers are correct, marks will be given, full marks will be given. Okay, and these uh, names are uh, developed by sometimes books, sometimes tutors, sometimes assessment books, right? So parents get panic. You know what is this branching method? How come my parent, uh, my child, do not know? Then ask the child, hey, your teacher got teach or not? Uh, teacher never teach. Ah, uh, problem, right? Uh, so don't worry. These are names, right? Which is developed by different books, different authors, maybe different tutors, right? And in some schools they may be taught the student is taught that particular method but the teacher may not use the name okay all right so there is no such thing as 100 okay you memorize 100 heuristics and then you are done with psle maths okay many uh, parents may be looking for what is this 100 heuristics that my child needs to know once the child know everything is done. My child will get 100 marks. Okay, there's no such thing. Okay, if there is, MOE is the first one that is going to come out with and to get the teachers in school to teach. All right? Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to uh, go through a little bit about the different understanding your child. Okay, for parents who just joined us, welcome, welcome. Right, there are some uh, parents who just join us. Uh, we are in the middle. Uh, don't worry. Uh, the the this uh, is recorded, so I'll share. Perhaps I'll share with the parents. Uh, later on. Uh, understanding the student different style. Different children is different, right? Uh, we cannot say that I have five children, so all of them take PSLE. Uh, some get better results than others. Likewise, some of you have more than one children, right? Different children are different. Right, uh, some children learn differently. Some students are more kinesthetic. Kinesthetic means they are very physically active, they get bored very easily. So, the way your approach is they must use hands on, right? Or you may need to use uh, have greater breaks for them, right? Maybe teach for 15 minutes and then stop and then teach again for 15 minutes at home. Huh? Uh, visual learners uh, they're attracted to colors, images, and pictures. So, this category of uh, student. You can ask them to do, uh, you know, maths notebook. Uh, they can do a mind map. They can do very, very, very well. Very nice. Huh? Usually girls, huh? okay, they do very, they're very good notebooks, very colorful and so on. And they're very good special sense. Okay, some students, uh, auditory lean, uh, learner, that means they learn by listening. So the more you talk to them, the more they understand, right? The more you teach that, uh, them and then they understand. So you must probably understand uh, your child. Right, different child learn very different among even among siblings. Okay, now this is uh, an approach to teach maths uh, that is used by MOE. We call this CPA approach. All right, uh, it's Bruner's theory of representation. So how student learn maths? Right, some parents say that okay, I want my child to have a head start. Right, I want to teach my P1 child uh, P6 maths. Uh, okay, it's not possible, right? It's not, uh, your child is at preschool, I want my child to learn uh, primary one curriculum. Okay, why? Because 
uh, I'm talking about typical. Uh, of course, there are some students who are children who are geniuses, uh, right? Uh, different category, but in general, right? Student, they learn, this is based on theory, uh, mathematical theory, education theory. Student learn in stages. First, concrete. Okay, so you can see in preschool, uh, a lot of touching, a lot of hands-on hands -on activities, right? So that's where they learn. Okay, they touch, right? Then move on to pictorial, right? Models, pictures, and so on. Eh? Then after that, move on to abstract. So if this fraction, for example, three quarter minus one third, these are already abstract, right? This is topic of circle. This is already abstract. So if you want to jump your child straight away, eh, your lower primary child teach abstract, eh, they may not be able to understand. So that's why at PSLE, uh, P6, uh, MOE doesn't encourage the use of algebra, right? Because they believe that the use of algebra is at higher level, okay? Children have to be taught the pictorial level, okay? Uh, which is true, right? I see many students, if we teach them using models, they can visualize and understand better. But of course, they are the higher ability students, okay, who may skip the model method. They use the unitary method. Now, unitary method is, I would say, a pre-algebra method. Very similar, right? Uh, four units equals to eight, for example. One unit is how much? So that's actually uh, mini algebra, all right? So uh, MOE also proposed the use of unitary method as well, all right? So you can choose, but uh, for student of uh, average student, I will really promote or encourage the mastery of uh, a model drawing, okay? But if your child is getting 80, 90% and above, model drawing may not be the most efficient method for them, may not be the faster, faster method for them. So they move on to unitary method, right? Which is perfectly fine. As long as they get the correct answer, the method is uh, correct. Okay, now this is uh, some parents uh, ask, uh, you know, how to teach a uh, student, right? What problems? My child cannot answer, right? We give them the four or five mark question, how to, how to teach them. Okay, one of the method, uh, important uh, method or useful technique is called the scaffolding uh, teaching technique. Okay, scaffolding is providing different levels of support to student, eventually removing those supports so that student can become self-directed learners. Okay, of course, we want our child, everybody wants those, uh, you know, wonderful child where, you know, autopilot, meaning that homework do by themselves, right? Any question you give, they can do by themselves, no need support, right? But very rare. If you have such children, right, you must be very, very thankful. Okay, uh, most of the time, our children, they need our support. Now, this is one technique that you can use to coach your child. Okay, uh, so one example is to elicit the prior knowledge, right? So, uh, later I'll give one example. Huh? And then reading the question aloud, uh, identify the keywords, important information for the child, and then translate the information into models or visuals. And then next step is to provide or identify possible strategies and then provide partial information until students are able to solve the problem. Okay, uh, it's a very common for parents or even sometimes teachers uh, for us to give the full working to the child uh, if the child are stuck. Okay, some parents ask, uh, teach, uh, say, what to do if my parents, uh, my student is, my child is stuck in that question. Say a format question. So what many uh, parents will do is that, uh, give the answer, okay, this is the answer. And then student will see the answer, yes, 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 I can understand. Of course, the students say they will understand, right? Because the answer, the working is right in front of them. Okay, but that's not the, the best way or the correct way of teaching. Okay, we need to use the scaffolding technique, which I use very often in the uh, my tuition class. It takes time, right, for both the tutor and the child, but it is very effective because we want eventually the student to be able to answer themselves. Because during the exam, right, we will not be there to give them the answers, right? They must be able to answer themselves, okay? So many students, they like to take shortcut, okay? So as parents, we want to we want them, you know, to be self-directed learners and be able to answer uh, by themselves, okay? So I want to illustrate this uh, just using one question, one simple question, two-mark question from the PSLE. Okay, maybe I give uh, parents about uh, just a short activity, uh, if not uh, parents feel bored listening to me. Okay, maybe if you have a... Pen or pencil, uh, you can use calculators, no problem. This is uh, extracted from one PSLE question. It's a two mark question, okay? Paper two, okay? Very simple, straightforward question. Okay, I give uh, parents three minutes, can? Okay, and then uh, once you get the answer, can you just type in the group chat?
it's optional. Some parents say that, oh, please don't let me do PSLE maths. Okay, it's optional, but uh, if uh, just try, right? I want to show the purpose is uh, I want to show how to do this scaffolding technique. All right, so I give you about, about two to three minutes. Okay, then type the answer in the group chat. All right, don't worry, nobody can see uh, your answers, only me, right? It's, uh, it's not public. Huh? Okay, I have one answer already. Good try, good try. Don't worry, you get wrong. There's no right or wrong answer. I mean, there's a correct answer, right? But my purpose is not to test parents here, but to show the scaffolding technique, all right? Okay, I got four answers so far. Thank you very much for participating. Okay, parents who just join us. Okay, uh, this is just a quick uh, question extracted from Pan's PSL equation. It's a two mark question, right? Uh, should be quite straightforward. So far, I got one correct answer. Maybe can. Need to give a prize, huh? Okay, one more minute. One more minute. Okay, all right. I shall stop here. Huh? Okay, so far we have quite a number of who, uh, parents who, uh, who submitted the results. Uh, I got one correct answer. One correct. Madam Nazura, congratulations. Okay, the answer is 108. The answer is 108. Huh? Okay, thank you very much okay, for uh, participating. Okay, uh, so now let's say your child, okay, the, uh, this the purpose is not to test parents. Huh? I want to show this scarf holding technique. Okay, what you can do at home if your child is stuck. Of course, parents, uh, you can see the answers. Huh? You have the answer key and so on. Huh? So this is taken from Pan's PSLE question. It's a two-mark question. And you can see that uh, it's not easy. Huh? Even it's a two-mark question, right? Remember, we have the three, four, and five-mark question as well. Now, this is uh, just a two-mark question. Okay. So technique number one, um, the first step of the technique is to elicit prior knowledge. So remember, this is past PSLE question. That means a uh, student who sit for this paper will have gone through uh, the entire curriculum. Eh? So this is on the topic of ratio. Okay, so the student must know the concept of ratio. They must know the concept of uh, equivalent ratio, right? Okay, so uh, if the a student, example, uh, do not know what is the concept of equivalent ratio, for example, they will not be able to answer this question. Okay, so you need to elicit their prior knowledge. Okay, so you may need to reteach before you, uh, before you get the student to attempt the question. Okay, so that is uh, method number one, to elicit prior knowledge. Secondly, to read the question aloud with them. Okay, now when you read together with them loud, okay, they will uh, tend to focus on the keywords, right? And then give them time to think through the question. Now remember, children are children, right? They are not like us. They, read, they don't read as fast as us. Okay, and then the next step is to identify the keywords and important information. You can underline or highlight. So for example, here, I bold and underline. So the ratio of number of angelfish to that of clownfish in an aquarium is 4 is to 5 at first. Okay, so this at first. Huh? So uh, important information here. So after three clownfish were sold, the ratio of number of angelfish to that of clownfish became four is to three. This is what happened in the end, right? So what was the total number? So this is the answer. Eh? I mean, the, the question, final question. What is the total number of angelfish and clownfish in the equation at first? Okay. So once you identify the keyword, keywords and important information, so what you can do is if the child 
trans, uh, then tell your child, okay, uh, so can you do, after this you can do or not. Okay, after you help them identify the keywords. If the child say, okay, uh, mommy, I'm still stuck. Okay, so the next step, what you do is that you help them to translate the information into models or visual. <laughs> okay, here I'm using the unitary method. All right, I'm using the unitary method here. So you can see here at, at first, right, uh, A stands for angelfish, clownfish, five is to four. So after the clownfish was sold, that means after that, right, after the first event, it became four is to three. Okay, so we translate the information rather than stuck staring at the question, translate it into visuals. Then after that, we identify possible strategies. So you ask the child, so what do you observe here before and after? What is changed? What is unchanged? So they see that after three clownfish were sold. So the clownfish were sold, right? So the clownfish were, there was a change in the number of clownfish, but the angelfish remains the same. Ah, so that is the important information. So now we know that we use the strategy of external unchanged, okay? Or one, uh, one variable unchanged, okay? So how do we do next? We make the variable which is unchanged the same by using the concept of lowest common multiple, right? So we know that the angel fish is unchanged. So since before is five units, after is four units, to make them the same, we find the lowest common multiple of five and four. You times four here, you get 20. For here, you times five, you get 20. All right? And remember the concept of equivalent ratio. If you multiply by four here, since this comes together, this ratio, so you need to multiply by four to the clownfish as well. And now the clownfish before becomes 16 units. And for angelfish, you times five becomes 15 units. Uh, okay? Then after that, you tell your child, okay, can you proceed on from here? And then the child say, okay, mommy, I think I can do now. I can get the answer. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, yes, I get the answer. But if the child is stuck again, now what you do is that, then you proceed on to provide the next partial information. Okay, so they compare. Right, clownfish at first, 16 units. And then in the end, became 15 units, right? There is a decrease by one unit. Why is that so? Uh, because from the question, they say that three clownfish were sold. So one unit is three, right? So one unit is three, and they ask you what is the total number of angelfish and clownfish in the equilibrium at first, right? Total at first, so this at first, right? 20 plus 16, you get 36. So 36 times three, you get 108, okay? All right, so you can see this is the uh, one technique that you can use, apply, to teach uh, your child at home using the scaffolding technique. All right? Okay, can I? Uh? Okay, I don't have much time. Okay, I'll go through very quickly. Okay, these are the four steps. Uh, what problem, problem solving strategies. Uh, okay, so understanding this based on Polya's four step problem solving process. Understanding the problem, what are the keywords, What what are the conditions to be met? How will you describe the problem in your own words? Devising a plan. What are the various heuristics? What problem solving strategy you can use? Okay, carrying out the plan, right? And then reflecting. Now this step here, the final part, many students are lacking. This is what sometimes you can do at home, okay? To get them to take a look at the answers. Some students say, that, okay, mommy, I got the answer really. Okay, uh, so you can ask. So how do you check? How do you know your answer is correct? All right? Can you... Uh, do or redo using another method. See whether your answers are correct. Work backwards. Okay, see whether it satisfies the, the information in the question itself. And check whether your answers are logical. Right? So sometimes you are teaching the students to be able to reflect on their answers. Okay, in education, we call this metacognition. Understanding your own uh, thought process. Okay, so what makes good problem solving uh, problem solvers able to distinguish between relevant and irrelevant information, ability to see quickly and accurately the mathematical structure, able to generalize across a wide range of similar problems, and able to remember a problem's formal structure for a long time. Okay, some students they remember better, some students they practice again and again, they forget. Okay, uh, so right, uh, so this is a problem, right, for some students who forget very easily. Some Parents tell us, um, say, yeah, my child always forget. Okay, so, right, use a notebook, right? Practice. The more you practice, the more you can store the information inside. 
And these are some other problems affecting the child's abilities to solve uh, problem linguistics knowledge. Okay, uh, the sometimes uh, the linguistic ability that means the, the if the child is not very strong in English, it may affect uh, the understanding for maths, right? Because of word problems, a lot of uh, usage of uh, you know uh, English. Uh, having difficulty identifying the problem type, not able to identify schema knowledge, okay, what type of problem it is, having limited problem solving strategies, okay, not uh, some strategies, some students are taught uh, many, many strategies, right, in school, during tuition class, at home, right, they're exposed to different strategies, some students are not, right, because may, perhaps in school, uh, the class is focusing more on the basic concepts and not uh, the higher level questions. Uh, having difficulty in identifying operations needed for the word problems, conceptual knowledge, some students are not able to identify, uh, you know, uh, basic uh, operations, okay? And lack of confidence and willingness to persist, willingness to persist. Uh, some students have uh, low self-confidence. Uh, this is something as parents, uh, we can help the child uh, at home, all right? And sometimes uh, the students, unfortunately, students tell me that my tuition students say that, okay, my parents always scold me and so on. So rather than scolding, it's best that we help them, coach them, okay, uh, at home. So to give them the confidence, right? And one way to give them confidence is to let them see some success. Meaning that if the child is average ability, getting less than 60 marks, don't give them the four and five mark type of questions. Okay, they will lose confidence and you know they will not be able to proceed. Give them the easier one and two mark questions first. Okay, once they're able to master, then you proceed on. Okay, to the uh, more challenging questions. Okay, this is one strategy to check the answers. We got NTUC technique. Uh, some parents ask uh, how to check answers. The NTUC technique: check the numbers whether the numbers are transferred, uh, the numbers are correct or not. Transferred correctly. Check the units. Okay, calculation, estimate, estimation, or working backwards, forward, are the answers reasonable? Go for alternative methods. Okay, so this one method to check the answers, the NTUC technique. Okay, so what we can help your child at home? Okay, uh, start from young. Okay, uh, I know as early as possible, some parents say, say yeah, my child next year P6 ready, too late ready. No, nothing is too late, huh? but... If you still have a younger child, it's best to start as early as possible. Remember the spiral, uh, spiral approach, the spiral curriculum that uh, I shared with uh, parents, right? <coughs> okay, if the child is not able to uh, master the concept at lower level, it gets more difficult at higher level. Okay, they will get more and more lost, right? Okay, daily home routine, 30 to 60 minutes recommended at least of maths daily. Okay, what you can do at home, uh, parents, <coughs> is to monitor ongoing topics in school. So let's say the teacher is teaching percentage in school. So at home, you browse through the textbook and the workbook. So make sure that uh, the child can teach, uh, the child can understand the topics that is taught in school. All right, and then you can review the topics reinforce right at home and practice and stretch. Okay, stretch means what? If let's say your child is able to master everything, all the questions you can do, you can stretch them with more challenging questions or top school papers and so on. Okay, ensure good working habits, uh, neat and legible handwriting. Use the strategies thought. Okay, annotate and draw diagrams. Uh, monitor their homework. Make sure the calculators are not used in paper one. This is something parents can monitor. Because uh, I see the tendency for children to use calculators when they're not supposed to do so. Eh? Okay, assist your child to in drawing up the timetable for regular revision and practice. Let your child practice solving max questions and practice papers within stipulated time. Okay, so that means you time them. Eh? In school, very difficult for a teacher to do time, time tests eh? because it takes a lot of time. So for example, at home, eh, you can regularly, you can test them with a top school paper or full paper. Okay, uh, you say, say uh, child, today we are going to practice uh, top school paper. Okay, one hour, so you time. Then after that, you mark, and then you can see the results. Okay, so when you're revising, work with your child, consider using questions such as what makes you say so, what if, what other methods you can use. Right? Questioning technique. Okay. Apply maths in learning in daily life. So, for example, when you are doing shop shopping, right, you can, uh, about GST, for example, right, uh, 
So because GST is in the syllabus uh, under percentage. Uh, so when maths, uh, apply maths in daily life as much as possible. All right, speed, right? When driving, so you can talk about speed, all right? Guide and not tell them how to do work. Okay, rather than telling them, okay, just give them the full answer. Sometimes we want shortcut, you know, we expect them to do on their own, but we need to guide them and, uh, you know, along the way. Encourage perseverance in solving problems. So I see many students, they like to give up very easily. So you need to encourage them, even if it takes two, three hours to solve the problem, let them solve because that is their learning part of the learning process. Okay, and if your child make a mistake, allow him to redo without referring to a work solution provided by the teacher. Okay, remember the scaffolding technique which I share with parents. Okay, all right. Uh, so we have overshot the time a bit. Huh? Okay, parents who are joining us, just join us for science. Uh, please bear with us for about, you can just join here because it's the same uh, Zoom link. Huh? Okay, uh, I'm just finishing maths. Uh, I'm going to science very, very shortly. Okay. And for preparing for PSLE 2023, okay, just a bit of timeline because parents are asking what is the GAN chart. Okay, uh, so uh, schools will complete the syllabus by August. By August, uh, uh, some, some schools even in June and July next year. Okay, if your child is sitting for PSLE 2023, just take note that the P6 syllabus would be completed latest by August, meaning that instead of in September, October for other levels, at P6, they will crash course very, very fast. That means everything is speed up. Okay, in addition to the P6 syllabus, P6 itself, there's a lot of syllabus, a lot of topics, uh, maths and science. Okay, uh, maths, the teacher will teach speed. Uh, it's a very big topic. Algebra is a big topic. Circles is a big topic. And then fractions, percentage, volume. Okay, and so your teacher, the, the school teacher will teach very, very fast, right? So you need to prep your child and prepare them as early as possible. And PSLE oral will start in August 2023, listening compression in September, and the main written paper will be end of September. So this is a timeline for parents who have uh, student, uh, children sitting for PSLE next year. Okay? All right. Okay, I will go through the Q&A very quickly. Now, parents, if you have any, I, I'm, uh, I've uh, ended uh, my math session. Okay, I'll go to science uh, later on in about maybe about 10 minutes time. All right, so I'll go through the questions that uh, parents have asked uh, when you register. Okay, very, very quickly, I try to answer. I've answered some uh, in the workshop just now in my presentation, and I will try to answer the rest uh, right now. So if you have any other question, please feel free to type in the group chat as well. Huh? Okay, uh, so one parent asked, marks allocation for answers. So for paper one, it's just the final answer. Now for paper two, uh, there's marks awarded for uh, steps, okay? And this is based on the examiner's marking rubric, right? So you wouldn't know, parents wouldn't know what is the rubric, eh? but basically if let's say it's a four mark question, if let's say there is three steps, one mark for one step, and then the final answer mark, all right? Then how do you manage differentiated teaching in your class for students of varying proficiencies? Okay, I think these parents asked me specifically about our tuition classes. Okay, uh, and tuition classes in general, it is smaller than school. Like school, we have up to 40 students. Tuition classes, we have, so my students, uh, we have some sometimes some classes, two students, uh, some of my bigger classes, like the classes that I'm teaching. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I cannot hear you. Huh? Okay, parent, please, uh, if you have any question, just type in the group. Okay, uh, I will address uh this uh, parents who just join us for coming for science uh you can just join in i will start science uh, very very shortly yeah all right okay so tuition classes are generally small so we are able to cater to the needs of different ability students okay and our materials are differentiated so we have bronze silver and gold questions all right so students start off with the bronze question the easy question and then we proceed on to the silver and the gold question so if we have students uh, who is very, very super high ability, right? Getting, I have students who are getting 100 marks to come join our maths class. Huh? So for such students, I will give them extra worksheet. So meaning that let's say I have a, a class of students in my tuition class. So if I have students who are very, very smart, uh, who finish very fast, they will not sit there and do nothing. Okay, I will give them extra worksheet. I will give them even the silver question, and the, the gold question, and even I tell them I have the diamond question and platinum question for you also. All right, so they'll be stretched accordingly. 
And how do you teach uh, kids to break down problem sums into bite size? Okay, so refer to the scaffolding technique that uh, I shared with parents just now. Uh, how to make the child remember all the math heuristics methods? Uh, the shortcut answer is to practice and to have a math journal. Right, parents, uh, students forget very, very easily. Right, uh, what they learn, uh, what we teach them yesterday or even today, they will forget. So one way is for them to write down, to journal, right, uh, to have a maths uh, notebook so that they remember the remember the heuristics. So you can help them monitor them, uh, and of course practice, practice, practice. All right, there's no shortcut, uh. So you cannot say that uh, okay, let's give the student a one whole stack of cheat sheet and then they memorize. That's done. Uh. This uh, it doesn't work that way. Okay, how do students differentiate maths problem sum to the maths heuristics method? Okay, through their prior experience, practicing, okay, exposed to the questions and practice. So my high ability students, in general, uh, uh, there's no shortcut. They will practice, right? They are exposed to challenging questions, right? The problem is that some students in the tail end classes or the mid ability classes, the in school, they focus on the basic concepts. So the students may not be exposed to the challenging heuristics compared to students in the better classes, right? So maybe what you can do at home is for parents to expose them to the different heuristics so that they too can benefit from the more challenging questions, okay? So it's about practicing. The faster they do, the more they can practice. The more they are exposed to various questions, right? The better they are at solving maths problem. Okay, uh... Okay, my child has issues with time management, especially for... Okay, uh, parents who just join us uh, for this workshop, uh, don't worry, it is the correct uh, Zoom link. Uh, it's the correct Zoom link. I'm just finishing maths. Uh, I extend a little bit. Okay, you can just uh, stay here and listen up. I I'm going to end very, very soon. Okay, my child has issues with time management, especially for maths paper two. He has been leaving few questions unattempted. Okay, now this is not about time management. Eh? Okay, this is about the child not able to master the concept. So if the child do not know how to do, obviously the child will leave blank, right? So the main problem is not about time management, right? So it is about the child not having the concepts, right? The right concepts, strategies, and so on. So as soon as they can master the concept and strategies, okay, they automatically they can complete the question very fast. Okay, my child, this is the other end. My child loves to finish his question very fast. And due to that, he will have a lot of careless mistakes, not only for maths, but other subjects also. Even after we remind him, he still did. Is there any other advice? Okay, my advice is to set a target for the child. Now, sometimes uh, children, the parents, uh, our target for them is just to do as many practice papers as possible or as many as possible. So a student, obviously they say that, okay, since my child, uh, my parent asked me to do as much as possible, I just do as finish as fast as possible. Then I'm done, I can play my computer game and so on, you know. Uh, so instead of uh, the number to complete, the target is to complete as many papers as possible, you set the target, the score, all right? So you give them, you tell them, okay, you need to score how many marks for this paper? You need to score at least 80 marks, for example. So you give them, and then, then they automatically slow down and try to aim for the score instead of completing. Okay, so try this uh, at home. Huh? All right, and... Okay, parents who just joined us, I think Madam Shariza, you're joining us for science, right? Okay, don't worry, you are in the right uh, class, uh, right session. Uh, I'm just finishing uh, maths, okay? So just uh, relax and uh, you can just hang around. Huh? Okay, parent asks, what would be the good gang chart template to plan for PSLE preparation? So you need to create a weekly routine at home. Okay, uh, okay, weekly routine, what to do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right, so once you have a routine, try and follow the routine. Sometimes we have a routine, but we don't follow. Try and follow as much as possible. And don't give up. Huh? Even if it says, uh, even if you can follow 60%, 70% is better than uh, not practicing. Okay, my concern for a child is how to excel in maths, uh, low ability, uh, low, uh, long answer questions. Okay, the solution is to teach them and reinforce, redo, practice, and stretch them. All right? And prioritize the revision. Okay, some parents say that, okay, uh, Mr. Yang, my child have problems with uh, the problem sums. So, okay, what exactly is problem sum? 
PSLE problem sum, even in paper one, we have problem sums, right? So you need to be able to diagnose what is the exact uh, problem, right? If the child is getting 50 something, 60 something, right? Uh, a lot of the time, even paper one question, the child is having problems. So do, at home, focus on the paper one question first. There is something parents can cope, right? Because parents tell me that, say, I cannot solve uh, all the challenging three, four mark question. So, but the one mark question or the paper one question, most parents is able to help the child. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, what are the strategies to help my child in doing revision daily? 30 to 60 minutes of daily coaching at home by parents. Okay, so this is very important. Now, some parents say that I already sent for tuition, you know, so it leaves, I don't have to teach anything. So that's not true uh, because tuition is only once a week or maybe twice a week, right? For your child to accelerate or to score better, to increase, improve on their marks, they need to be doing maths on a daily basis. Okay, so that's where we need the support of the parents. So you can send the child for tuition, right? Professional teaching. We will teach the challenging questions and so on. But what about the other easier questions, right? So they need the time to put in the time at home so that you can get them to improve faster, right? Remember, if you start sending your child for tuition at P6, the child may have problems since uh, the concepts of uh, P3, P4, P5 concept may still, still not strong, right? So remember, we need to teach P6 topics as well as the earlier topics. Right, so that's where parents' involvement is very, very important. Okay, so daily routine at home is very important. Huh? So, uh, what assessment books to recommend? So, for the maths, depends on the ability level of the child. There's no specific uh, uh, book, but what I will recommend most will be the school test papers. What you can do is that to redo because the papers that is done by the school teachers are most aligned with the PSLE syllabus because I've seen a lot of. Uh, assessment books which are not aligned with the curriculum. Okay, so doing the wrong thing and sometimes wrong answers and so on. Okay, so for, uh, you can drill the top school papers, right? This is a very good resource. So my top students, they always do the top school papers right to the very end. They finish all the top school papers. Okay, after attending tuition, both my student, my child still have problems understanding some math problem sums and also sometimes they are stuck in answering science open question. Okay, uh, so my the, the thing is that frequency of the tuition, right? If you send your child for tuition, how frequent, right? Probably it's once a week or twice a week, right? So one to two hours. So is that enough for the child to catch up, right? Uh, so usually it's not enough, right? So that's where we need to support them on a daily basis. Every day they need to practice one hour, 30 minutes to 60 minutes of tuition, uh, of, uh, of uh, maths to catch up with the syllabus. Okay, not only to catch up the syllabus that they have lost, that may, they may not have mastered in the past, in the past years, but also the new topics. So there's a lot of things that uh, the child needs to catch up, right? And yeah, okay, so you need daily coaching from the parents as well. All right, okay, thank you very much for your support, uh, parents. Okay, so it's 3.15, I'm a bit late for the next session. Uh, apologies, all right? Now, uh, do parents have any, I shall stop here, any questions, any further questions about maths? Then later on, I think we will take a short five minutes break, can I? Then after we move on to science. Okay. Okay, Mr. Ibrahim asks, if ready attending tuition for one and a half hours at home, still need parenting coaching, how long? One hour? Uh, one hour? Yes. Okay. Uh, tuition at home, uh, tuition once a week only is not enough. Okay. Once a week itself is not enough, depending on the ability level of the child. Okay, if the child is getting like 80, 90 something at P5 uh, in school, uh, then I would say just, you know, uh, school work uh, at school and one uh, and one week of tuition is enough. But if the child is getting 60 something, 50 something or even weaker, uh, it may not be enough. So some parents, uh, they send for group tuition once a week and then supported by uh, private tuition coming, uh, you know, they, they have somebody come at home to teach. Then if the parents are not able to coach the child at home, maybe parents are busy working and so on, they can get private tutors to teach the child two to three times a week. But the best if parents can teach yourself, right? Uh, so it has to be on a daily basis, especially if the child is sitting for PSLE, there's a lot to catch up, a lot to cover. So as much time you can give your child, uh, you know, to help them, is, is even better. Okay. okay. 
All right. Uh, okay. Uh, how many hours of studying in a day uh, maximum? Uh? I would say one hour, uh, okay, half an hour for per subject. All right, every day for on the weekdays. Huh? So you probably two hours, right? Four subjects, right? English half an hour, Malay half an hour, uh, maths half, mother tongue half an hour, you know, uh, half an hour every subject. Or you could do one hour, uh, two subjects per day. That means one hour of maths, one hour of science. And then uh, the following day, one hour of mother tongue, one hour of English. Weekends, you can do more. One hour per subject. All right, or school holiday, you can do more. Okay, so you need a lot of intensity for the child. Now, because children, uh, you, you cannot let them do on their own. Nowadays, a lot of children, uh, uh, they will be, if we don't monitor, they will keep on playing with their phones or distracted, you know, with computer games and so on, right? Even my students last year, uh, I mean, my this year PSLE student, they were given the one week break, right? In school prior to the actual exam itself, uh, there's a study, they call it study week, you know? So I told my student, uh, I asked my student, hey, how come? Uh, the study week, but you have to still, your teacher is calling you to come uh, to school, right? Then they say that, oh, uh, our teachers don't trust us to study at home. So I asked, are you sure? You know, cannot trust. Because PSA is just a few more days, you know. They say, yeah, Mr. Young, uh, I cannot trust myself also. I will, at home, I will get distracted, you know, I will not study. So imagine two to three days to PSA, they themselves not able to, uh, you know, be self-disciplined, right? Because of so many distractions. And I'm surprised a lot of the students not you know, not just a minority. So as parents, we need to support them, all right? We need to monitor them to have a, you know, to be, uh, you know, sometimes we say that, okay, tiger mom, tiger dad. It's, it's not a bad word, right? It's something that you just need to monitor them, okay? So that uh, they can score, okay? Now, students in madrasa, yes, that's another different ball game. My children is from madrasa, right? Uh, yes, they have to cope with uh, so many subjects, yes. Uh, very challenging. Yes, I uh, empathize uh, student with Madrasa, but that's just uh, the way it is. So just do our very best to support them, lah, to give them the necessary encouragement. All right. Okay, so I have to end, right? Uh, so sorry, I have to end. Okay, uh, okay. And then, by the way, if you have any question, just feel free to uh, email me, all right? Message me, drop by. Okay, and just a quick... Uh, uh, quick overview of the programs that we have at Edufran. Okay, we provide K2 to P6 classes. We have five centers island-wide. Okay, we have online class and physical class. Me, myself, I'm teaching at uh, P6 classes, maths and science at five, all the five centers, uh, except SN, except Serangoon North. I'm teaching at Pasir Ris, uh, Tampanese, uh, Chow Chukang, and Woodlands for next year. I'm starting uh, in November itself. So if you want to join, you can only sign up. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, so... And this is the our uh, so-called our chart uh, towards PSLE. So we are starting in November, and then we have holiday workshop in between for to focus on certain key areas like word problems and so on. Okay, and if any parents you want to sign up, okay, you can just uh, scan this and then it goes to the to the uh, registration page. All right, you can uh, directly sign up. If you want to sign up later on, also no problem. If you have any questions. Uh, my ME staff at the centers, you can just uh, find our contact uh, in our website and then you can, uh, you know, you can drop us a question and so on. Okay. All right. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, parents. Okay.